Welcome everyone. As we wait for some of the people to arrive, I'd like to give you a few pieces of information. My name is Elena and on behalf of Paratiso, we are very happy to have you here today. Uh, so make sure that you say hello in the chat box. We are very, very glad to have you here. So if this is the very first time that you are meeting with us uh, through this webinar, uh, through these year, I, I would like to tell you that we have hosted a series of webinars and today we are going to have uh, Patricia Alcaraz sharing some online uh, online uh, techniques and teaching strategies uh, when it comes to uh, teaching uh, children, especially focused on teaching reading. Um, some pieces of information for you before we start. Um, we are going to be sending you uh, your certificates and the information on your certificates for those of you who attended today's webinar and the previous webinars. Uh, you're going to be receiving these emails uh, next week okay so make sure that you check your emails uh, in order to find out more information on certificates that's the first piece of info the second piece of info uh, that i'd like to share with you I, we are very very excited to share this uh, you're also going to be able to find on our social media and you're also going to find it on your emails um, a very special invitation we are opening uh, our uh, special uh, space for those teachers, for those colleagues that would like to share their expertise, their knowledge on uh, anything that has to do with teaching and is uh, willing to share through this kind of uh, opportunities, through these kinds of webinars. So Paratiso I would like to invite you to send your proposal. Uh, and there is a link in our social media and maybe we can also send it here at some, uh, toward the end of today's presentation so you can browse it. And uh, maybe if you uh, are interested, you can also share your call for proposal so we can review it and maybe you can be the next party so presenter okay so uh that those are the two pieces of info that i wanted to share with you today so without further ado i would like to introduce you to patricia alcaraz and thank you so much for joining us Pati? hello everybody um well this is going to be a a very um fun and interesting webinar because we're going to I'm going to focus especially with children reading storytelling with children and to start with I want to share my screen All right. Okay, so let's start. Um, to start with, we're going to talk about online storytelling activities for teaching children. And I imagine that this is new for all of us, right? The online stuff is all new for us. So to start with, I have some questions that I would like you to answer in the chat. Elena will be reading the answers, okay? So question number one that I have is, do you used to do storytelling with your students like before this time that we are going through? Do you used to read stories to your students? It doesn't matter the age of your students. If you can answer um, in the chat, Elena, Elena will be reading some of your answers. Yes, so uh, we have many yes, absolutely every Monday and a good number of yes, yes, yes. Yes, okay. All right, so we can go with the next one. What about now, during this time of quarantine? Um, can you, will, were you able to 
read stories to your students through your online classes. So if you're ready, Elena can read some of your... Yes, uh, we have a couple of yeses all along, not every time. Yes, I use Zoom for my reading class, not yet. Yes, mm -hmm. every day. Okay, Those are some so, of the answers. Thank you, Elena. So now we have the why. Why do you still read your, to your students or why not? Why is it that you're not ready or not yet? You didn't start yet? This is the last question. Let's see, this might take a little while to uh, elaborate because it's not just a yes, no. Um, yeah, exactly. I used That's to true. do that with some students. Um, the question is, if you have already uh, done storytelling, uh, why? And if you haven't, why haven't you done storytelling yet with your students during, uh, during online classes? I used to do that with some students. Uh, that's one of the answers that we got so far. Okay. And in the case that for the ones that answer that not yet, or that it takes a lot of, um, maybe a little bit more time, like- uh, Let me, uh, let me, I'm sorry to, to interrupt you, Padi, okay. but we have more now. Uh, okay. Why not? Because I don't know what approaches to take. I used to do it to improve listening. Uh, mm -hmm. Why? Uh, I, uh, this is for a yes, because they like it. They really like it. Yes, I am ready. Why not? Because we have limited time now. Okay, yes, it is true. It is true. Mm -hmm. um, there, are I, there are many reasons and all of the reasons are valid, right? Um, but we all know that uh, storytelling, it's very important for students, not only for listening purposes, but also um, to lower the affective filter that it's really important for students to learn a language, right? And to approach from that, through that um, technique, let's say that it's storytelling, uh, to work with reading and some reading strategies. And this is from, uh, we can work with them since they're very little, we don't need to, they don't need to write an essay. Uh, after reading a story, for example. And, and what we are going to do now, what I want to share with you now is what is it that it's already available or after this time, after quarantine, that all uh, many pages and many apps like liberated their, uh, their, their offers and some of them were free. Uh, I want to just focus on the things that we have from the web. Okay, so and here I put three examples, uh, three pages. Okay, freechildrenstories.com, that's the first one, magickeys.com, and then we have the stories that we have in YouTube. And I have uh, there, these are four examples that I want to show you. And uh, what I want to do is, we, I want to show you the differences, okay? So we are going to start with the first one. Okay. Okay, I don't know what happened there. Okay, let's start with the second one. <laughs> I wanted to show you two different types. Okay, this is Magic Keys. Um, and this is a page. And what it has is uh, this, the children's story books online that you can choose from. And what it's interesting of the different pages or the different options that you will see, um, in this one, for example, you have books for young children, that, like the classification that it has or it shows. And I want you to go um, and take a look at this one because the other one was different. And it's the way that the, the, the web presents the story, okay? You have like a slide and you just, move by clicking next or back and you read the story and this is something that you have to read out loud right you don't have the, it doesn't have audio it, yes it seems that we can't see the the screen i mean we can see just the powerpoint oh i'm sorry thank you elena there you go okay i'm sorry so i'm gonna go back Okay, um, 
I'm going to start again because I wanted to show you how it starts. Um, this is one of the pages that you can choose a story according to the age of your students. Anyway, you still have to read before, right? That's, you have to do it. So the, the story is presented uh, in, in a format of slides. And then I'm going to tell you uh, why I wanted to show you this. And you have to read the story because it doesn't have any audios. So it's, you can do read, uh, read aloud, right? Um, this is the way some of the pages present their storybooks online. And I don't know, I couldn't connect this one because this is different. Well, but the, the difference with this page is that this, you can see the slides and in the other one, you could see that you had to roll, you have to go down. You, you still have the slides, but you had to go down the page, okay? So um, then we have the stories that are uh, on YouTube and these have audios. And this is, I put two examples because this is a book, a real book, and the person is reading the story. Let's, okay, well. Okay. The Bravest Fish by Matt Buckingham. Far below the waves, a little fish named Stanley lived with his school. They were the brightest, sparkliest fish of the deep, dark sea. One morning, Stanley woke up late. Hello, it's me, he called to his friends, but the reef was strangely quiet. Okay, this is one, and the other one is, um, maybe you know this one. This is in the format of a video. It's still a story, but... The Very Hungry Caterpillar. of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. Okay, um, this is, the these end. are just yes. examples. Yes, you have some questions. Uh, I actually have one comment in your URL, okay. the freechildrenstories.com, there is an E that is missing, that's why it probably didn't connect to you. You see? Uh, okay, so, yes, you are please. right, yes. So thank yeah, you thank you, Elena. Our very uh, yeah, thank you. That was weird. It was a, it was so a, I, I was one of our mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, if there are any questions or comments, Elena. Um, everybody likes the music, and of course, the very hunger caterpillar is, mm -hmm. you know, always a hit among yeah. teachers and children. Yeah, that's true. And plus the uh, the fact that it has millions and millions of worksheets already done, right? And activities for mm -hmm. different ages. Okay, this is the other page that I wanted to show you because it's different from the other one and you can still browse by age or also by style. And I'm going to show you how it looks. The books, they're different, you can choose. You have to go through them and 
um, they are presented in different formats. That's what I wanted to, sh I wanted to show you. And there are all valid, they're all interesting in stories. And as I said before, you should read to see if it meets your objectives, right? Your class objectives. Let's look at one. This is the one I wanted to show you. Because it's presented in a different format from the other one. The other one, you remember it was like in slides that you have to change. And now you can still change, but you have to roll down. And it's different. The format, the presentation is different. And there are options, of course, if you don't want to do it directly from from the web by your online classes, like to have it ready in a PowerPoint, for example. So you see, this is what I said uh, when I said that you have to roll down to go to change pages, let's say, okay? All right. Um, do we have any questions, comments, Elena? So far, we're good. So far, we're good. good. We, they're asking uh, for the uh, URLs for Magic Kids, uh, keys.com and also for free children so um our participants already shared that with with the okay. with the others so thank you okay all right okay so now can you see my powerpoint again i'm pretty sure we will in a few seconds but not okay. yet okay all right so i'll wait it's not coming up yet let me see. There? Should yes. be ready. Yes. Okay. All right. So um, this is what we have on the web. And actually what I'm going to show you, it's a, some, a part is also from internet. And another part is uh, from a book. So uh, what it's always important is uh, what we can use and what we can have as our own resources, what we can make, what we can produce, right? And why? Because it depends on our creativity. And now I think all teachers have become very creative because it was a must, <laughs> okay? Um, if we prepare our own materials, we can, uh, we can do it according to our needs, right? To what we need for the level that we're teaching, the vocabulary, the language structure, the, um, the topic that we are doing, right? Uh, so this, in this way, we can reach our goals that we have for what we want students to, to get or to do. We personalize because we can stop all of the, the, other, the, other, the other stories that we saw on the web um, the ones that were in the version of books, I think we can read and we can stop and, and, and go back and ask more because we can, we read it, right? Um, we can paraphrase, we can use synonyms and, and that way we also enrich the vocabulary, right? Um, but with the video part, even though we can stop, we cannot uh, to ask questions is not the same because it's not you're not the one who's who's telling the story, right? Uh, so uh, we can read aloud because it's a very good reading strategy. Uh, students can read and they can also listen to you, so that's uh, better, of course. And uh, we can have more interaction with students. Students, we can let students interact more with the story. We can help or do or make them personalize the story, right? To take it down. So um, now what I want to do is, um, I know you're not first graders, but I want to share the, the story, a very short story. Then I'm going to share more stories that I'm going to show you the activities. Actually, what I want to show you are the activities, okay? But, um, I know you're all, or you are all teachers, and I'm not gonna teach you how to read a story, right? But instead of doing that, I want you to relax and, and enjoy this story that I have for you, okay? And then we're going to continue with activities.
All right. Um, what you're going to see now, it's a book that actually what I did was I took picture of the pages of the book and then I put them in a PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Can you read, can you see the book already? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Um, and I'm going to kind of, uh, tell you the story and kind of tell you what I actually did or what, what I actually do in class with them, okay? But since we have something uh, we want to leave for some suggestions and questions for before the end of the meeting, I'm going to go a little bit fast, okay? So what I used to do, what I always try to do is um, I work a lot with the cover of the book. So from the, from the pictures, they can guess who the characters are and also what the story is going to be about. And with, other, with first grade, I don't work a lot uh, at this time, and not now when it's uh, virtual classes, with the written word uh, unless specific vocabulary, right? But with other word, other grades, like second grade and on, I will ask the name of the story because they can read, right? So this is a story of two friends, Hippo and Rabbit, or I will ask what are the two animals, and I will ask them, like, uh, according to the pictures, if they look, uh, f uh, if they're, they think they're friends or uh, they just met, okay? So the story is, bugs so you can see hippo looking at a bug and an insect okay and you can tell me what this insect is this is for the kids right and they will say spider whatever so the spider comes and says boo to hippo of course hippo we didn't know nobody knew this was very afraid of spiders not all bats but of a spider and he would say, oh no, rabbit, it's a spider. And rabbit was looking at the spider and he couldn't understand why rabbit bats was, why hippo was so scared. So look at rabbit's face. Oh, this is just so easy. Um, and hippo is very scared. He, he gives his back to the, hip, to the spider. So hippo, uh, rabbit says, don't worry, hippo, I'll move it. And he takes like, oh my goodness, this is something so silly. And then Hippo, when Rabbit take, moves the spider, Hippo asks, is it gone? Am I safe? And Rabbit, look at Rabbit's face. Oh, he's like, it's gone, you're safe. You don't need to make a big fuss about it, he says. But Hippo is still very scared and he asks, but if, what if it comes back? And Rabbit says, relax, just be brave like me. And I will uh, ask in this part, students, you repeat with me, just be brave like me. So they can interact later with, with the other parts of the story. And Hippo asks, like you, Rabbit? Yes, Hippo, just like me. And I will ask them to repeat that. But as Rabbit was going to the other side, we can see another bug here. And this is not a spider. So can you guess what insect, what's the name of this bug? This is for the kids, right? And here we have, maybe they will guess it's a fly, a mosquito, or also a bee, right? Um, and the bug comes on um, Rabbit's nose. Boo, he says to Rabbit. And Rabbit, look at Rabbit. He looks surprised, uh, maybe a little bit scared. It's a bee. He goes crazy. Rabbit is very scared of bees. And the bee is surprised of uh, Rabbit's reaction, right? So he starts jumping up and down and crying and, and asking for help. Help, help, a bee. And now it's Hippo's turn to look at rabbit and and think like why is he behaving like this um please hippo save me oh save me and the bee is after um rabbit don't worry rabbit 
I'll shoo it away because you don't kill insects, you don't kill bugs, you don't kill, especially you don't kill, you don't kill bees, right? So I'll shoo, shoo it away. And shoo, shoo, go away, little, little bee, he says to the bee. And now rabbit says, is it gone? Am I safe? It's gone, you're safe. Thanks, hippo, that was brave. And hippo says, oh boy, brave like you, rabbit. And rabbit says, yes, brave, just like me. And this is the end of the story. Of course, this was a little bit fast for you, for my students, but I wanted to get to this. Okay, so the vocabulary that we're going to work with them um, is, of course, bugs. So what are the bugs, the in, what is another word for bugs? Insects, I will say, because I already said um, some many times before. And do you remember what, how many bugs we saw in the story? Hippo was afraid of, and they will say spider. And rabbit was afraid of bees. And what other bugs do you know? And maybe they, some will come out with Spanish words or English. And, and, and that's normal, that's the way it goes, right? So I will start with a spider, okay? And for first grade, for example, I will ask them in their notebooks from here, from the, the, the class, the Zoom class, I will ask them to draw the little circle and the word back, box, and then the insect. And now another insect is the grasshopper, let's say. And what color is the, the spider? What color is the grasshopper? The grasshopper is green. And so we go and we add more um, vocabulary, bags, vocab names for, um, for this group, right? And then we have ant, what color is the ant? And I try to look for different colors, uh, insects from different colors, right? And then we have ladybug, and they know ladybug because of the, the TV show that. And then we have uh, dragonfly and bee, okay? So maybe for first grade, maybe, maybe, but I don't know, <laughs> um, depending on, because this virtual class is kind of, uh, we never know until where we can get, right? So uh, maybe then I can ask them to write on in another class to write their names, the names of the, um, of the insects, of the bugs, right? I think um, one, of our, one of our participants would like to know if you pre-teach vocabulary before the, the reading. Yes, and actually this class that I did last year was uh, I started with this, with this picture, let's say, okay? Mm -hmm. So I, my class, last class, when I was uh, live, presencial, I, mm -hmm. I started with this, and then I started with the, with the story, and then I continue with the story. And at the end, what they did was a little, um, because something I have to tell you is that we, we, we don't, I don't read stories in one class. So this story, I read it in two class of 40 minutes, okay? Because that gives time for students to really um, incorporate the vocabulary, the structure, the, the words that they have to say to answer, okay? In this case, I started the class last year with this uh, vocabulary, but now I changed it and I, I wanted to start with this, with this story and put it at the, at the end. Um, but it depends on depends on the story, let's say, because sometimes if it's the if the story is not that um, not difficult in the way of vocabulary, but concept. If the concept is different or difficult, I will work for with vocabulary. I will pre-teach. But in this class, I I pretend because this I didn't read yet. I read it last year, but as I as I said before, in a different context, right? Okay, um, now I want, to, I want to show you another story that, that uh, I already did with first grade. Okay. Just for you to know, Patty, we have nine minutes um, left. Okay, I'm not going to read. I'm going to show the story. Can you see the, the, the book, the cover? Yes, we can. Yes, okay, we can. so I'm going to go. Fast and in this part, he mumbled as his tummy rumble is the part that I will give them to repeat with me every time. Okay, 
So this is the story and uh, we'll stop here, okay? And that's the first part. So then I will say, and I did this in class, uh, draw three things that bear try to eat. And first, we work a lot. What was the first thing that he wanted fish? And what color was the fish? Silver fish, sil sil silver salmon. Okay, so we, we go over this through the story and then we finish in before like a 30 minutes we finish and we start working with this because they have to do it in their notebooks they don't have the, the printed page okay so it's basically more instructions that they have to follow here and then they draw the three things and then they name right they write their names and then the next day next class we continue with the story and the story finishes here so what I, what I said, the story finishes here. Everybody is angry, right? It doesn't say angry, it says what, uh, not everyone was quite so happy, but it, they were angry. So I asked students to tell them, I asked students to finish the story, okay? So they would have to choose. And since it's first grade, I gave them options. So the first option was the bees were very angry because the bear um, took or split all the, their honey or um, the bear asked them to share uh, or the bear shared the honey with them and they had a picnic, okay? So they had to draw that. Um, another one that the last one that I want to share with you is with what I did with second graders, okay? And you see the vocabulary is not difficult. They know because I choose the books according to what they already know. So we start with something that is um, interesting and fun and easy not difficult okay even though we have we review vocabulary okay this is a story we stop um, before that and then we can we continue and this is the end of the story so i asked them we did it also in in two in two classes i asked them to draw the story in three parts what happens at the beginning, what happens in the middle, and what happens at the end of the story, okay? Um, we also, I also work with students <clears throat> with um, uh, third grade and they had to, they had to uh, write about the, draw the, the, main, the main character and, and write three, three words to describe the character, okay? Um, now, um this uh this is a uh, sharing time and i want you to be free to talk about your experiences if you feel free writing in the chat you can do it or if you have questions suggestions or fears um it's open for you something that while we have some uh, people and give them time to to write in case they are interested in writing or maybe if they want to uh, mention something, uh, don't hesitate to do so. Uh, something that I would like to point out is that these activities can be done both online and offline, right? You can have the students do those activities in their notebooks, on their notebooks, or you can have them, uh, or you can have them do on a an interactive whiteboard, uh, as, some, as, as Samara showed us two weeks ago. So you can use both uh, the more online and offline versions uh, or digital or non-digital versions uh, to incorporate it into your reading class. Um, let's see, reading is a complete class. Sync, a, a sync. Thank you, Patti. It's better. It is better if children read the story or if, okay, so one person wants to know whether if it's better if you, the teacher, read or if it's better if they read it. What would you say to it? Yes. At the beginning, at the beginning, yes, for sure, we have to read the the correct pronunciation for the pronunciation intonation because once they pronounce it wrong, it's impossible to correct. Okay, uh -huh. so I will recommend. That's why it's important that for us to read, and then maybe they can read. And actually, they read along with us uh, by reading, right? But I will say we read first, and then maybe they can read. All right. We also have some suggestions. Uh, the wrong dash chan.com it says that it's it has native speakers reading the stories so we will 
most certainly check this out. So before yes. we close today's session, I would like to remind you and invite you in case you haven't heard this invitation yet. Um, Natalie is going to uh, send you the flyer and also the link to the call for proposals. For those of you who might be interested in sharing the same way Patti, Samara, Vicente and myself did uh, these past uh, weekends, you are more than welcome to send us your proposal so we can open a space for you to uh, share what you know, what you're doing uh, with the rest of the teachers in Paratisol. So feel free to uh, you know, send us your proposals. We'll be really, really happy to, um, to uh, look at them and, and give you also this space to share. Okay, so thank you so much for joining uh, for joining us, Patricia. Thank you everyone for joining us. It's been a great pleasure. Uh, and um, something that I would like to mention, something I also mentioned at the very beginning, which is if you have, uh, if you, you will be uh, receiving some information on certificates this coming week. So make sure that you check your emails, all right? It's all right. Ooh.